Hey, there we go. Perfect, 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 perfect. Missing stars, act one. The mountain looms above us, tall and imposing. Hey, see that ledge? My gaze follows his finger to an outcrop jutting a few hundred meters out from the mountain's surface. Remember the end of our last climb? That's our starting point now. Pretty cool, right? Wow, we've come a long way, haven't we? You bet. You've learned the ropes pretty quickly. At the pace we're going now, I'd say we'd be at their goal sometime in the afternoon. Just enough to get time back for dinner. Finger guns, because that's a hat thing. He claps around the back, his fir grip firm and reassuring. Now that's what I'm talking about. Come on, let's go. Got everything compact. Double and triple tricked, all weight accounted for. So these guys are mountaineers. If I remember correctly from the de from the demo, the main character was like good, uh, really interested in climbing and stuff. Well, except for breakfast. He laughs. Well, the more you eat, the more you... Oh, okay, the less you have to carry. I finish your sentence and confidently hop off the rock we've been sitting on, enjoying the solid crunch the ground makes when I land. The shock from the landing helps balance the butterflies in my stomach. Like last night's campfire, I feel a growing heat that radiates to my toes. The sensation eases my nerves. We've got this. In a single fluid motion, he finishes the rest of his pitch black coffee and leaps down to join me. Alright, let's rumble. Got a long trek ahead of us. Right behind you. I adjust the straps on my backpack and set off down the trail with him. Check your straps one last time. Wouldn't want to have to tell him, well, we came all this way just for you to get a bruise from the gear. I think more is going to happen there. I'm just guessing. Yep, I know. Double and triple check to remember. Just making sure. Or it's my job here, you know. Unless you don't need me for this climb. We both laugh. The sound bounces off the rocks and echoes in the valley, almost as if the mountain is laughing with us. Is there going to be an avalanche? Because I think that's a, a myth that that happens. I prefer to keep you around just in case. We continue our ascent to the mountain. I mean, you know, throw him in front of you and then run when you're being chased by polar bears. Are polar bears in the mountain? I don't think so. Never mind. Anyway, yetis! That's what I wanted to say. We continue our ascent up the mountain. Gradually, the soil and grass give way to snow and stone. Ascent up the mountain. As opposed to ascent down the mountain? What? Nervous? A little. It'd be crazy if you weren't, dude. This is dangerous stuff, you know. The key thing is to remember that you can make the, that nervousness work for you instead of the other way around. Anyhow, you've got nothing to worry about while I'm here. I've got your back. Mm, and I've got yours. Ba -ba 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 -ba. He flashes his trademark grin. That's a promise. Just focus on the climb and the goal at the top. We both come to a halt. We're here. This is the starting point, right? Yep, this is the place. He pulls out a thermos and a small flask. Now I've got a proposition for you. You do everything right, we get to share some of my special brew at the top. We do this like men. Deal? Deal. He claps me on the back again and sets off. Irish coffee. Good for celebrations. Oh shit. What's happening? Why can't I move? I try to call out to him, but there's no sound. I scream, but end up swallowing it. I've got your back. And I've got yours. I can't hear anything either. I've got your back, and I've got yours. No, I checked them. I checked everything. Why did they... Well, shit, what happened? I can only see black. It's here again, that sound. It fills my body, choking me. I can't feel my leg. I clutch my fix on my thigh, struggling to feel something there. Nothing. I call out for help, but no one will find me here. He's gone. I'm going to die out here. My hands are going numb, gloves soaked through with blood. Whoa, that's that escalated. They slip against the wet fabric of my trousers and... I throw up my... Oh, hey, this is where the demo started. Um, in the demo. Um, I throw off my covers, damp with sweat. Confusion and panic blur my vision as I struggle to stop the bleeding. But there's no blood. My breathing is shallow and ragged as though I've just run a hundred kilometers. Adrenaline is still coursing through the, my system. I try to slide to the edge of the bed, but my leg tangles in the sheets and I topple gracelessly to the ground. Smooth. This pressure makes it hard to move and my vision is tunneling as I try and fail to catch my breath. Okay, Eric. Try to think back. Remember what the doctors told you. Breathe in. I inhale, or at least try to. Breathe out. I wheeze out as much as my panic body allows and try to repeat repeat the process. I imagined him kind of going like 
<clears throat> Something like that. My body's being crushed under its own weight as I breathe. I'm drenched in sweat now. It's draining out of me like water from a wrung sponge. Time has dragged to a crawl. My heart only seems to be getting faster. It's dull, violent thumping fills my ears like tiny explosions. In and out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Deep breathing exercise is very good for, you know, mellowing anxiety. In and out again. Eventually the pressure lifts and I can finally pick myself up off the ground. By the way, I, I disabled mature content on this because I was afraid of being banned. Not that anybody watches my stream anyway. Um, but, you know, I don't want to be, you know, surprise boobies and, you know, have my glorious Twitch career ruined. I limp my way to the window next to my bed and crack it open. There's a breeze. It's cold, but keeping warm is low on my list of priorities. As the cool night air pushes in to meet my face, I inhale and gulp it down like it's the freshest thing I've tasted in years. Yet this air is something I first encountered only a few hours ago, and the charming back alley view only serves as a reminder of where I am. Vienna, Austria. It's not the most glamorous view of the city, but the fact that I have my own room keeps me thankful. My older sisters are hosting my parents and I for the weekend. It's something we all couldn't thank them enough for, even if it isn't the reunion any of us were expecting. I can't remember, just, did he live with his parents before this? I don't know, we'll find out, I guess. I should get back to bed. Maybe the cool air will help. Uh, however, my right leg refuses to cooperate. Come on, you. I hammer at it a few times in frustration, but it just hangs limply from my body. It's been like this for over half a year now. Physically, my leg is fine, but it still refuses to agree with that assessment. At best, I feel like my leg isn't there, and at worst, I can't even get it to move. It's like some psychosomatic um, thing going on. I just wanted to use the word psychosomatic in a sentence, because that's a really cool word. Anyway, I'm more nervous about small things. I can't think straight sometimes, and those nightmares. I bite my tongue in an attempt to derail that train of thought. I shouldn't be like this. This is just not who I want to be. I know how that feels. Still struggling between sleep and waking, with cold air blowing against my face, tears well up in my eyes. But it takes me a moment to register them. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I won't cry. I'm not that fragile. I won't. Yep, yep, that's what we all say, dude. But, yep, nope, mm, nope, fuck it. <laughs> nope. Deep breaths. What kind of man am I being right? Oh, fuck off with that. Let's, let's get past this whole, am I a man, bullshit. Who cries in the middle of the night because of a nightmare? Probably somebody with an anxiety disorder? I don't know. It's so pathetic. Fuck off. I, I, dude, I know it now. It could have happened to an adult. It happens to soldiers and policemen and firemen all the time. Would you say those people aren't brave? One of the doctors said that to me. Maybe it's true. I don't know, and I don't want to research it. But if so, what does it matter? They never talk about it. They never show that to you. Oh, Lord. Another knock on the door. Steps on the wooden floor outside the room. Please, please, please don't be mom. Eric, sweetie. Well, I've gone and done it down. Her voice is gentle and concerned. My muscles tense up involuntarily. Eric, is everything all right? My throat tightens. Yeah, it's, it's nothing. Are you sure? I heard a banging from down the hall. I'm okay, just had a bad dream. I'm so awful. Mum quietly opens the door and makes her way to the end of my bed. It's hard to see her in the dim moonlight, but I can practically feel the concern radiating off of her. Is that why you opened the window? I just needed some fresh air. The room felt a little... My mind glows blank. I actually don't know if I can say anything else without admitting to my episode. There's never a reason for them, so there's no easy explanation for me to give her. It's just hard to fall back asleep. Come here, it's going to be fine. Wait, dude, wasn't wasn't Eric uh, uh, blonde in the in the demo? I can't remember. Maybe I'm just projecting because you know Austria blonde hair. I was about to mention the Nazis. I shouldn't mention the Nazis. I've only had two drinks. What the fuck is wrong with me? Let's go up this third one now. Eric, you're covered in sweat. Are you feeling ill? No, no, it was just a dream. 
Is your leg giving you trouble? Could you get up okay? Mom, I'm fine. My leg's fine. I just have a lot on my mind is all. I try my best to dispel any of the concern my mom has. Traveling all the way to Vienna is already giving her enough to deal with without me adding unpredictable panic attacks to the list. Is it about the school? I pause. That. A little bit, I think. I really don't know. Whether or not I was ready for this change didn't matter much anyway. At this point, I'll reluct reluctantly accept any help I can get. It'll be a good change for you, sweetheart. Your father and I made sure of it. Yeah, I know. I know they have the best intentions, at the very least. As for where that road leads, well, that isn't so certain. What I do know is that I'm incredibly exhausted, and feeling more on edge than I have since the accident. It feels like I'm being introduced to new sights, new smells, new everything. I want to be excited, but all I can think of is how easy, every, easily everything can go wrong. To me, anything could be a potential threat. I know it's been a few, a rough few days, but you know we're here for you, Eric, always. She hugs me tighter and I return it on instinct. Something about mothers is that they na they're naturally able to figure you out, even without you saying much. After my panic attack, I really needed this. Mom, thanks. Anytime. She pats me on the shoulder and her expression shifts to a warm smile. Are you okay to get some rest or do you need anything else? I'm tempted to ask for water, but at this point I doubt it would do much to steady my nerves. I'm okay. I really appreciate the checkup. It's my job as a mother. Come on. Double check to make sure everything is recording okay. Uh, maybe it is. I don't know. I can't tell. Ah, whatever. Cross that bridge when we come to it. I feel like a kid when she gently pulls me up, tucks me in, and kisses me goodnight. Mom, really? All part of my job, sweetie. You want your window closed? I shake my head. The air and faint urban sounds have become comforting to me. Well, if you need anything, I'm just a call away. I know. Good night, Mom. She lingers a little, giving me one last smile as she brushes the top of my head. Good night, Eric. She leaves my bedroom. And I'm alone here once again. Oh, what? It doesn't say here. What am I talking about? Sorry. As before, my mind drifts to my condition, but... But I guess I'm luckier than most. I'm lucky that my condition isn't worse, for one. I'm lucky that I have a family just to shout down the hall. I'm lucky to still have a re leg, really. I mean, lucky to not be ostracized from your family, because some people don't think mental illnesses are that big of a deal. You know? Just like anti-vaxxers don't think that... I don't know what the fuck they think they're stupid. It's these thoughts that eventually bring my mind to what awaits me at this new school. Against the noise of Vienna city life, my mind dr finally drifts away, fading from the lingering thoughts of an uncertain future. <clears throat> my addiction could be a lot better. I thought I said I wasn't going to get drunk for this. Well, so much for that. Base light plans, um, go to shit. Eric, are you up yet? Ellipses. I crack my eyes open. Daylight streams in through the open window. Before I can even respond, I hear the door open. Footsteps rush in to greet me. Hi there! A girl is inches away from my face, cheerfully greeting me. Oh, Jesus Christ! Woman! It's a face I know all too well. Morning, Beatrice. She's bouncing with energy as she tries to pull me out of bed. It's been ages since I've got to wake you up like this, remember? I'm not ready for this. Still drained from last night. I, mm, that looks like that looks like Lily's getup from Katwa Shoujo. Okay, whatever reference. Still drained from last night. I work to pull the covers up as far as I can. What self voices? What the fuck does that mean? Self voicing enabled. Did anybody else see that, or did I only see that myself? Am I? Ah! What the fuck was that? Okay, apparently I was just hallucinating. <laughs> Whatever. Mind if I sleep some more? That pout of hers hasn't changed in the slightest. But we have breakfast! As if on cue, my stomach begins to complain. Maybe I can reconsider. What's on the menu? She winks at me. You'll have to get your butt out of bed and find out. 
she whips the covers off my bed in a last-ditch effort to finally get me up. Instinctively, I yank the covers back. Beatrice just pulls them off again. It's really not as funny as she seems to think it is. Okay, okay, you win. At least, like, let me wash up first. She cheers and jumps off my bed, dashes out of my room, and runs down the hallway announcing my eventual arrival. My covers are still at the end of the bed. I guess it was the right choice to wear my pajamas instead of going for a more freeing option. No comment. Thankfully, my morning prep isn't too extensive. With just a rinsing of my face and a quick combing of my hair, I'm all set for some breakfast. Isn't it great to be a dude where you can just like go poop, 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 and you know, that's done? I mean, I just got a haircut, so I barely have any hair on my head anyway, so. Yeah. I have to do that because otherwise it's gonna be a mop and it's terrible. It's terrible. It's like a freaking like chia pet up there. Except like a chia pet that's like five times as. It's, it's like the chia pet with the coat of a Tibetan mastiff. I enter the flat's main room where the rest of my family is squashed into the somewhat small dining space. Morning, everyone. Mom immediately comes to my side, patting my shoulders. Eric, good morning. How are you feeling? She's blonde. Uh, good. Kind of hungry now that I see what you and Beatrice have been up to. There's a delicious-looking spread of eggs, toast, bacon, and fresh pastries, almost overcrowding the small table everyone is seated at. My mouth starts to water. I realize that I haven't really eaten since I left home. When was that? Well, I'm glad to see that our baby brother is still easily swayed by some home-cooked food. I mean, who isn't, honestly? Brunhilde rises from the kitchen table to greet me. How can I be a baby if I'm the tallest one here? Height has nothing to do with maturity. It's still so easy to tease her. I guess some things never change. It's the only thing you'll never hold over me. I take pride in that. Her eyes narrow. She straightens herself and takes a commanding stance. Stepping close, Hilda purposefully reaches her hand up over my head and proceeds to tussle my hair. You bitch. She pulls me in for a quick hug, though it's a bit lighter and stiffer than I remember. A bit more careful, I think. Still, the feeling's gone in a flash, and her eyes are soon back on mine. Hello, Spacebar? I missed you. It's great to see you up and about, Derek. I missed you too. Hey, take a seat. We've got a few things... What? We've got a few things out. Yes, that's a sentence. My sister's reminder that food exists is enough for me. I plop down and am immediately handled a huge plate, a canvas for me to create a picture-perfect breakfast. Just take what you want, I made a brunch for everyone today. Beatrice is far more skilled than I am in the culinary arts. I doubt I could have made scrambled eggs this early in the morning, let alone the array of breakfast food that's from me. Oh, come on, dude, scrambled eggs are like, you know, I mean, that's literally like eggs. Just throw eggs in a pan and like swish them up a bit with a spatula and yes, scrambled eggs. It's not rocket science, all right? I take a sampling of scrambled eggs and bacon, and with a gentle nudge from my mom, I take a spoonful of fruit, too. Coffee, sweetie? Sure. I'm surprised Beatrice didn't drink all of it. I take it that's your version of please? I mean, jeez, Eric, I'm not that obsessed with it, you know? Of course, she's already pouring herself another cup as she says this. She's my spirit animal, except with coffee instead of alcohol. Enough, girls. Cut your brother some slack, at least for today. Help me clean things up, all right? We're in their house, and already my mother has taken control of the situation. In a way, this treatment does feel kind of... wrong. I take a bite of the eggs. They're warm and fluffy. Beatrice has definitely mastered my mom's techniques. Yeah, put some Greek yogurt in eggs. Or actually, yeah, stir them up in a bowl with some Greek yogurt. Mm. Real fluffy. Although they burn easier, so you have to be careful about cooking them. I take another bite. Blah. Suddenly, I realize I'm not as hungry as I thought it was. That's what happens when you eat. My brain says these should be delicious, but my tongue doesn't quite agree. It tastes like something's off, even though it's perfectly fine. The orange juice is slightly sour, and the bacon feels more like a salty lump of fat. Jesus, dude! I tried to hide my lack of appetite by chewing as slowly as possible. Eric, eat up. Your food's getting cold. Mum knows what happens like what happen what Hey Mum hold on Center 
Mum knows what happened last night, but I can tell she's just trying to get me to sweep it under the rug, so to speak. Maybe she's trying to ignore it herself. I feel like I should say something here. Uh, fuck off! Okay, I'll get a little... Mm. Okay, we'll be there soon. Thank you. Whoa, hey, what? Oh, that's uh, Father. Okay, we'll be there soon. Thank you, Doctor. Ah, Eric, glad to see you are awake. Sleep well? Well, he looks stern. Is that, is that the, the character model they used in... Well, character model. Character portrait, what the fuck ever. Sprite. Um, they used in the demo. I don't remember him looking so, um... You know, mm, ish. Whatever. I managed. Who were you talking to? Oh, I was chatting with Dr. Bosworth, your new principal. Bosworth. He's quite the talker. Dear, would you like something to eat before we go? Some eggs managed to survive. No, they didn't. They're scrambled. Of course, I'll take a plate. Coffee, too, if you can spare a cup. If Beatrice left any, that is... I had that egg! Man, a Spoonie reference in 2020? Jesus fucking Christ. I'm way behind on the times. Mum quickly runs to fetch a cup. So, Eric, are you ready to see the... The Saint Dimfra campus today? I still don't know how to pronounce that. Saint Dimfra. Dimfra. For some reason, like, the last syllable always feels like it needs to come out, like, you know, kind of like when you're, like, doing, like, a like a ski jump. Except you ski jump into a wall. So it's like, Dimfra. I don't know. It's, it's just the way my brain processes the, the word. Saint Dimfra. Campus today. So that's just going to be a thing that's going to happen. As ready as I'll ever be. St. Dymphnas. If their website is any anything to go by, it's certainly picturesque. The campus was an old Jesuit monastery until they converted it into a school a few decades ago. A school for... <gasps> people with problems like mine. Dr. Bosworth, uh, Bosworth's very eager to meet you, Eric. He said he rarely gets to meet new students in person. Why is that? I'm not sure myself, but I take it this as a good sign. He'll be absolutely. Hey, well, 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 hey, well, hey, 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 I can read. He'll be able to personally introduce you to your homeroom teacher before classes start. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I guess that's a good thing. My mind's certainly full of questions. First of all, why am I pronouncing Bosworth in the Germ Germanic form with the W being like a V if I'm not narrating in a German accent? I don't know. I don't feel like acting. Anyway, breakfast finishes up not long before that, and the family is ready to head off into the great unknown. Everyone ready? Yep. No, oh, I remember this part. I wasn't. I wasn't uh, that big of a fan of this part. It was fairly. Uh... Oh shit! I missed that. We all load into the car, mostly padded with my belongings, leaving me squeezed in the back with my sisters. Beatrice, shop, stop shoving. You have plenty of room. Ellipses. Thank God I have the side seat. Okay, everyone, ready to go? A chorus of yes from the rest of us, and Mum starts up the engine. I didn't get a good look last night, but Vienna is an impressive city. There's lots of classic European architecture packed neatly against more modern storefronts and houses. I've always wanted to visit Vienna. It seems like such a cool city. Oh, we're passing the, the, uh, through the main... What? We're passing through the main thoroughfare. I thought it said mainframe for a second. That's how my eyes work. There's a great cafe there that we will go to a lot after work, Eric. We're also close to where I work. Oh, it's that building right there. She points at an office building just a block down the street. Wow, so you just take a U-Bahn? A U-Bahn? U-Bahn! Hey! Over here? Yep, it's pretty convenient. I read that your new school occasionally takes students down here uh, on Saturdays. We'd love to show you around once you've settled in. Yeah, there's a lot of fun places tucked away here. Sounds good. I just hope I can settle in. How long will that take, I wonder? Well, turn, well it depends on how much you want to mope. <laughs> I'm giving him a hard time, but yeah, I know. Finding out that you have a mental illness isn't exactly, you know, tea and pancakes. Is that a thing? Tea and pancakes? I wish it was a thing. It sounds delicious. As we exit onto the highway, the city gradually fades out. We pass through smaller towns, eventually making a turn off the highway some 40 minutes later. Almost there, everyone. Eric, this is the main road to the school. Seems nice. 
And indeed, the road up to the entrance is pretty nice. I only wish that it could assuage my apprehension about this place. My leg twinges, almost like it's agreeing with me. Twinge? Is that like minging, except with more twang to it? It seems like the closer I get to the school, the more anxious I feel. I could say I've changed my... Wait, hold on. Whoa, whoa, wait, hold on. So before... Fuck you. Uh, before, I thought there was like a the segment where we went to like some like thing with our sisters and like went to shopping or some bullshit. Are they skipping like right to just going to St. Diphnas? Because if so, that's actually pretty cool because I, I was not a fan of that uh, sequence at all. So if they are going like straight to the school, then that's great because I love all the quirky characters that are at the school. Blah, 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 blah. I could say I've changed my mind, but I think the point where I could have turned back passed weeks ago. Besides, I've already troubled my family enough. Changing my mind now would just cause more problems. Eric, how are you feeling? I'm all right, just <clears throat> nervous. A little. Mom nods in understanding. Just tell me if you don't feel good and we'll go somewhere so you can take a break. Sure. Before long, we arrive and file out of the car. It's nice to stretch my legs after being squished into, into the back of Mum's eco car with Hilda and Beatrice. Brunhilde! Oh yeah, it's they're totally going to the campus. Immediately. Awesome. Great. Uh, already I like this more than the demo. Sweet. Uh, after consulting the map of the campus from my welcome pack, we set out toward our destination. The main building is the easiest to recognize. It's three stories, the tallest building on campus, and definitely very old. A mass of ivy coats the entrance, adding a natural green layer of patina to the stonework. Isn't this building pretty, Eric? This is where you'll be going for classes. Why does he look so disapprovingly at me? Like, he's just like, hmm, it's like you are disgraced, my bloodline. Like, what the fuck are you? Uh, it's nice. I like older buildings like this. It's kind of like the old church back home. Good morning! Who the fuck is that? Is this the principal dude? Uh, suddenly a booming voice emerges from the building. Despite the distance, I can hear it very clearly. Is there a loudspeaker nearby? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, totally him. Large man comes out from behind, behind the entranceway. He's waving at us to come inside. Ah, that'll be Dr. Bosworth. Is he always so... <sighs> yes. Hello again, Mr. and Mrs. Wilhelm. Good, so good to see you again. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. The large man, Dr. Bosworth, vigorously shakes my parents' hands as if they were old friends seeing each other again. He looks like Santa Claus. And this must be Eric! He approaches me. Despite us being almost similar in height, I can't help but feel diminished by his presence. Your parents have already uh, told me so much about you, Eric. Such a gentleman to be joining our halls. He steps t back and takes a bow. Mm, that's dramatic. On behalf of all the staff here, welcome to St. Diphnas. Private gymnasium. Pri Private gymnasium. Yes, that. Uh, thanks. He claps his hands together loud enough to scare some of the nearby birds away. Jesus. He speaks the language of the gods. Well then, we have a lot of ground to cover today. There's some paperwork inside for you and your parents to sign. The tour, the ritual... Rit ritual what? Kidding, kidding. He hears us inside with a jolly laugh. If you don't mind, I'd like to begin with a short one-on-one -on -one with Eric. Please make yourselves comfortable in the, in the lobby. We'll be right here, then. Bosworth's office is very organized, with bookshelves containing dozens of volumes, paperwork neatly stacked, and a desk polished to, uh, a desk polished to a mirror sheen. It's almost intimidatingly perfect. He settles into this, his massive chair and shuffles, shuffles a few papers, then gestures to the seat opposite his. Ellipses. It's incredibly comfortable. Clearly, this school spares no expense, for some reason. Now let's get down to business. We like to get a feel for new students by asking them about their comfort levels and what they want out of this school. Hold on one second, let me check my audio levels to make sure I'm not overloading the microphone. What the fuck am I doing? Okay, makes sense. Glad to hear it. He pauses for a moment and thumbs through a file on his desk, presumably mine. Who thumbs through things? But you, like, use your fingers for that? I've never, like, thumbed through, like, files and stuff like that. I don't know. Maybe I'm an amateur and I just don't know the secret technique to 
I don't know, the five-point palm exploding heart technique, except when it comes to looking up papers in a file thing. But the fuck ever. So you're comfortable with lessons in both English and German. That's right. Splendid! Miss Kleis is one of our English... Seriously, like, every time I see one of these these words, I, mean, I just want to, like, just, like, go freaking through the roof on, on pronouncing the last syllable. In which case, it's the only syllable because it's a one-syllable word. Nice. Miss Kleis is one of our English-speaking instructors. You'll be in her homeroom. I think you'll get along with her just fine. Sounds good to me. I take it English classrooms have students from a wider variety of countries. <laughs> You're a smart lad. Yes, that's correct. We have a lot of people coming in from all over Europe, so we do our best to accommodate them. If you had preferred a German classroom, you'd probably see more people who are native to Germany, Switzerland, or Austria. Makes sense. Bosworth nods in agreement to making my responses, or marking my responses on a sheet of paper. Indeed, indeed. Next question. How do you feel about coming here? I shift slightly. Obviously, I wasn't expecting such a direct line of questioning. Why not? I'm kind of nervous moving here, I guess. It's a new school, after all. In truth, I'm kind of freaking out inside. This is all a lot to take in. Even though I was anticipating this. Yeah, I'm not anticipating. I'm talking about. That's a weird way to pronounce anticipating. My leg twinges a little, as if reacting to my state of mind. Bosworth smiles sympathetically. It's not uncommon for our students to feel what you're feeling, Eric. We at St. Diffnaz are always trying our best to listen for when students aren't well or are feeling stress. Save the game! I don't know why, but I just want to save my game. His words are well practiced and clearly part of a much longer speech. I mean, really, I'm, I'm just saving my game because if there's like surprise hentai, I want to you know, be able to go back to it because I have mature content disabled right now. Thank fucking God nobody's watching me right now. <laughs> Nonetheless, I feel a little better. He takes one final glance over the paper in front of him before speaking. Is there anything you need before you get started at school? Anything you want me to tell your teachers or supervisors? Once again, his words are practiced, yet genuine, unlike mine. Thankfully, I know exactly what I want. It's something that's been on my mind for a while. Where can I go for a good walk? Bosworth chuckles at my response. I'm happy to inform you that the campus has an excellent series of footpaths for you to use at your leisure. When you take the tour, I'm sure your guide will do her best to point that out to you. Looks like we're all done, Eric. Great. I'll be out in just a second. Please go on ahead. I do as he says and lift myself from my seat before leaving the office and carefully closing the door behind me. Who is the one, like, crazy person? Not crazy person. Um, eccentric person. You didn't know if, if he or she was a dude or a guy. I mean, a dude or a girl. But he or she was hilarious. I want to meet that person again. He or she was awesome. Okay, all done. How did it go, Eric? Is, is he nice? It went well, and yeah, Dr. Bosworth is actually pretty nice. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Ha ha ha. Jesus, he's like the freaking Kool-Aid man. Just like busting that door. Oh yeah, I'm glad to hear it. That'd be awesome. I turn around, not realizing the man I'm talking about has already finished whatever he was doing. Wouldn't it be great if schools had budgets for Kool-Aid Man interventions? If the Kool-Aid Man was even real? One can dream. I just called Miss Class. She's in her classroom at the end of this hallway, Eric. She'll be expecting you in a minute. Now I'll need to steal you two away, Mr. and Mrs. Wilhelm. Just a few bits and pieces of last minute paperwork. He guys them into the office and I'm left with Beatrice and Hilda. I need to get a pop filter for this microphone. It's not this one. Fuck that shit. Oh god damn, that fucking hurt my finger! Well, this is the most exciting stream I've ever had. I hurt my finger. I need more alcohol. Anyway, he guides them into the office and I'm left with Beatrice and Hilda. Well, want to check out my classroom with me? My sisters nod in agreement. I lead the way and knock gingerly on the door a few times. Come in. A young woman, probably a few years older than Hilda, greets- e Is that the same sprite? I think that's a different sprite. Ah, you must be Eric. Welcome. Her voice is prim, proper, and polite. Onomatopoeia- No, that's not an onomatopoeia. What the fuck are you talking about? That's, uh... 
I almost said Agamemnon. That's the fucking Greek general from freaking uh, the Iliad. What the hell is it? Alliteration. There we go. Jesus. Very teacher-esque. Thanks. I was told you'll be my teacher. That is correct. I teach English primarily, but I also hold some of the mathematics courses here on campus. Oh, and you two are... I'm Eric's older sister, Beatrice Wilhelm. And I'm his other older sister, Brunhilde Wilhelm. Call me Hilda. Brunhilde is such a badass name. They both sh shake hands with Miss Kleist, who smiles warmly. It's nice to see family members so interested in the school. Where are you coming from? We actually live in Vienna, but Eric here is from Baselstadt. Baselstadt? Baselstadt. Oh, have you shown him in the... Uh, have, sh mm. have you shown him the city? We offer trips into the city on most weekends. Not yet, unfortunately, but we are always open to showing you around, Eric. Yeah, we know all the best spots, like the cafe that I was completely un uninterested in in the demo. I'd definitely like to, like to explore it at some point. I guess we'll see. Sounds like you have some very capable guides. She smiles, at least I think it's a smile, as it's such a small change in her expression that it's almost imperceivable. You keep on using that word. I don't think it knows what you... No, no, that's not it. Have you taken a tour of the campus yet? Not yet. Great, we'll have someone come by and show you around. Miss Kleis falters for a second before speaking again. Uh, unfortunately, your sisters won't be able to accommodate, uh, accompany you. I'm afraid it's policy, so I hope you don't mind. I cast my eyes over to my sisters. That's fine. Beatrice seems downcast. Hilda just looks worried. Like, whoa, oh, hey, well, I guess normal people aren't allowed any further into. Oh, come on, dude. Get off it. Because normal people. Fuck off. There's a knock at the door, distracting Miss Clays from whatever she was about to say. Ah, perfect timing. Come in. A young girl edges from outside. Oh, hello. Is Eric here? Uh, yeah, that's me. Great, I'm mm, Ella Ella Sahin Sahin. Is that, was that her name from the demo? I can't remember. I'm Ella Ila Ala Ila um, Sahin Sahin. I'll be giving you the tour. Ella is a dark skinned Ella is a dark skinned slender girl about my age. Her uniform is neatly pressed, almost like it's cut out of the glossy pamphlets the school sent me. That's actually a pretty cool way to describe it. The rest of her looks just as polished. Her hair, her face, and even her beret look to be picture perfect. Nice to meet you, Ella. It's nice to meet you too, Eric. Now let's get started, shall we? Right this way, please. That's the dude's name. Person's name. I don't know. Um, that's the person I want to see again. The tour is nothing out of the ordinary, even if the school is. This hallway houses most of the art and music rooms, where elective classes and after-hours clubs are held. The buildings themselves are beautiful, but I can't help but notice the small additions, the light filtering through huge windows with suspiciously thick glass, or wide corridors dotted with emergency phone lines. I'm gonna save. Private Gymnasium Saint Divna was established in 1858, and while there's been some modifications to install modern conveniences and the like, for the most part the building itself has been well preserved. Despite my best efforts to hide my limp, Ella notices me lagging behind slightly, and slows down to match my pace. I panic and attempt to say something to cover for, for myself, even though it's obvious she's already noticed. The, uh, the hallways here are really wide! My, my old school feels cramped compared to this. Yeah, hallways wide. What the fuck was that? It's rather spacious, isn't it? Dr. Bobsworth likes to sell the historical significance and architectural ri richness of the place to some of our visitors, but I'm sure you're not interested in all that canned stuff, so I'll just stick to the basics. The floor above us is reserved for assorted odds and ends. Some offices, storage rooms, nothing very impressive. The view is nice, though. Let's just head through the next building, shall we? Despite my lack of response, Ella continues on, unfazed. She must have given a lot of tours like these, ones with unresponsive, awkward recipients. Ella does her best to fill the silence with random facts about the school as we move between points of interest, but it seems as though she's starting to run out. Should I try and speak? My last attempt was poor at best. <laughs> yes. 
I guess I should present myself as more than a brick wall. So, Ella, how long have you been here? Three years. Transfer students are very common, but St. Dee's has been my only secondary school. Why are you here, though? I shove the thought out of my mind, but there's nothing to take its place. My mouth makes a half-hearted attempt to cover for it. Looks nice! It is. Ugh, that was awkward. Come on, Brain, you've done this a million times before. Why can't you think of anything to say now? The lake is a popular spot to relax, although there's no fishing or swimming allowed. There is a pool, though, which is obviously cleaner than the lake, in any case. We descend the stairs and emerge from the building into the bright, blinding sunlight. Ella points towards the small structure to the right. Whoa, 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 what? What? Oh. Oh, that oh, self-voicing. Fuck you. Wait, did I disable it? No. Fuck you. Hey, There we go. God, that freaking voice, like, weirds me out. Self-voicing. Mm! The fuck is self-voicing anyway? Whatever. Uh, see, she, um, she switches to her left. And the dorms are across the way. We'll head there in a moment, but for now... Ella leads us straight and comes to a stop in the middle of a walking path between two buildings. This is the main school grounds. I'm sure you saw it in your way in, but I like to stop the tours here. It can be a little busy sometimes, but if that doesn't bother you, it's a nice place to relax. Lots of places to relax, I see. Wouldn't want us getting anxious after all. Mm -mm -mm. You fuck you. As impressed as I ought to be, doubt colors my thoughts once again. Once again. Ella takes my silence for awe and gives me a knowing smile that feels entirely out of place given the circumstances. Dude, she's showing you a new school. Like, what? what? <laughs> but, yeah, it has that effect on people, doesn't it? Well, the classrooms aren't nearly as impressive. They're pretty standard, actually. So let's skip those, right? After giving us another moment to appreciate the freshly mowed grass, Ella speaks again. Although, again, I mean, I don't know if I mentioned this when I played the demo, but, um... But I mean, uh, a lot of Eric's thoughts, even though I'm, you know, t taking the piss out of him, um, they're, th they're the types of things that, you know, somebody would think if they, you know, suddenly developed, you know, something like a, you know, anxiety disorder from some trauma or whatever. And it's like, oh, wow, now I'm, you know, now I'm in the world of people who, you know, are kind of stigmatized by society and it's kind of weird and stuff. And, you know, there's all this, like, you know, perception of who's normal and who's not and all that stuff. Anyway, um, anyway, overall, I like it. So I like it. I, I do, I do think it's interesting that they decided to put in a flashback, um, or at least something, um, that alludes to the trauma that Eric received, um, because Katawa Shoujo opened up with Hisao having the I don't know what where the hell it was. Heart attack? Was it a heart attack or was it something else? I can't, I don't know. I'm not a pulmon pulmonary, um, something. Fuck off. Anyway, that's pretty much the tour. I'm not the best at this, I know, but hopefully I've managed to highlight some of the more interesting spots for you. After a moment, I realized I, that I should have responded just now. Ella's adopted a slightly worried expression. Uh, yeah, it's fine. It looks good. Yeah, the parts they're showing us. I'm just kind of shocked, I guess. Another uncomfortably tense moment later, Ella sighs, slowing to a halt. Her, her smile fades up. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can read. Her smile fades into an empathetic look. Her tour guide voice drops to something more subdued. I realize this is a lot to take in. I'm sure you have your own ideas on what to expect here, and I'm not going to say that's unreasonable. What I will say is that this school is probably the best chance you have at addressing these issues, rather than ignoring them. Ella leans against the trunk of a nearby tree, hands clasped behind her back. Hey! How you doing? You aren't the first person I've given this tour to, you know? Students from all over the world have gone through exactly the same problem, faced the exact same fears. You're afraid your condition, whatever it may be, is controlling your life by forcing you to come here. But as long as you are acting on fear, you aren't going to make progress. If all you're doing is trying not to get worse, you're not going to get better. Of course the school isn't perfect, none of us are. What's important is that you focus on what we can give you, not what's taken away. A heavy silence settles in. 
one I'm not sure how to break. I understand what she's saying, so I guess it'll just take some time to put into practice. Thanks, Ella. It's probably pretty good advice. And for what it's worth, I'm sorry. I, I guess I'm just worried. Hey! So, uh, somebody falls out of a tree. Before I even have time to register this, she rises from the debris, dusting herself off and initiating a conversation as casually as one might wave hello. Suspicious person. Oh, hey, Ella. Didn't see you there. Don't mind me. For the record, that tree is a bit iffy, and you must be Eric. Th she thrusts a hand in my direction, a giant smile plastered on her face. <laughs> She's one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, it's nice to meet you. Ella seems to have shorted out, staring at the girl with a mixture of despair and panic. Irene, Irene Ross, at your service. Please tell me she, she has a route in this game. I would love that. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm Eric. Hang on, how do, you, how do you know my name? Huh? Oh, it's kind of a lucky guess. I figured it was either that or Aaron. I mean, lip reading is more art than science. Look, it's not important. And hey, welcome to St. D's. Irene throws her arms in a wide gesture at the expansive campus behind her. A thin line of blood whoa, seeps from her uh, a fresh cut on her cheekbone. Jesus, woman. Ella's face is completely drained of color. Doesn't look like it. Uh, thanks? No problem. It's always good to see a new face. I'm sure you'll fit right in. Ellie, you're giving him the tour, right? I'd be happy to lend a hand. Nobody knows more about this campus than I do. Because you're a spy. She holds up the case uh, strung loosely around her neck, which I now realize is a pair of well-worn <laughs> well binoculars. Ella finds her voice, maybe an octave higher when, than when she lost it. We're fine! We're right, spy! You probably have something to do, right? Nope! Totally open today. Just doing my rounds. Nothing really happening around here. Except Eric, of course. So I figured I might as well drop in. Ha! Drop in! I didn't even mean to do that! Hilarious! So, uh, what what were you doing in this tree? Oh, just climbing it and doing some people watching. I would have brought my laser mic today, but it needs fresh batteries. Where on earth did she get the laser microphone? I see. All right, Irene, you've had your fun. I'm sure you two will run into each other later, so can you please leave us be? Well, you just finished up your tour, right? Surely Eric wouldn't mind seeing the more fun parts of campus for a bit. Well, I'd be lying if I said that most of Ella's tour was, wasn't pretty standard. Ella, we still have time before we go back, right? Ella takes a moment to ponder it. All right, Irene, why don't you take us to some places you like? Great, follow me. I love Irene. I think I read that she doesn't have a root, which is a tragedy, but I'm holding out hope that she does. With Irene at the helm, the tour recommences. Ella is seemingly resigned to her inclusion. Maybe calling it a tour at this point isn't exactly accurate. So that building is probably the oldest, at least judging from the brickwork. There's this one patch where the bricks are newer, but I can't for the life of me figure out why. Maybe they renovated it? Nah, it's too small a section. I was thinking it could be damaged, but there's nothing on record about accidents. I tried getting a look behind it, but it looks like, uh, it turns out that kind of thing is frowned upon. You were chiseling out a section of the building. Yeah, for science! This is supposed to be a place of learning, you know? <laughs> I, I love her. What's the building used for, if I might ask? Huh? I don't know, like exercise and stuff? They, they got a gym in there. It's not very interesting. But brickwork is? No, what's behind the brickwork might be, like the Ark of the Covenant, or Nazi gold. Ella wrestles with herself before letting the comment go uncontested, but her expression is pretty informative nonetheless. Irene doesn't seem to notice. As we explore the more mundane aspects of the campus, I, ironically, find myself re relaxing more. Although Ella seems concerned I might think badly of them, the truth is that my imagination held far worse ideas. Really, it's those small touches of personalization and little imperfections that can make it feel normal. Eventually, we wander away from the camp. I mean, that's a, that's a good point. You know, don't sterilize stuff too much. Because then you won't have goldfish spawn. What am I talking about? Fuck it. Uh, eventually, we move up. Ella takes the lead again as we head towards the woods. Irene gives a shrug, but seems content to follow along. Before I have a chance to ask where we're going, uh, where we're headed next, Ella slows down to a halt. Anything interesting out there? There's a small walking trail just ahead for students who like the outdoors. That's me. Mind if we walk down a bit? 
I don't see why not. Boo, the woods are boring. There's rumors of wolves out there, but I've never seen one before. Like it or not, this is Eric's tour. Irene groans, but leads us down the trail anyway. <laughs> the trail is nicely paved, curving through the nearby forest. This trail runs for about a half mile in a loop. Great for jogging, walking, or just stretching your legs. There's also a clearing coming up where some of the uh, school clubs frequently meet. Which ones? The Astronomy Club, mainly, but smaller clubs use the space as well. That's pretty neat. Is the Astronomy Club popular? It's got a healthy following, mainly because of the club's uh, president's efforts. She's transformed it quite a bit. Oh, is that... Uh, is that... Sounds good to me. I'll check it out if I have the time. That's great. Feel free to ask me about any of the clubs here. Irene groans. We've been in these woods forever. <laughs> I love her. It can't have been, more, have been more than five minutes. Forever. Can we head back now? I shrug. Sure, we don't have a lot of time left anyway. The tour picks up again as we make our way to the last areas of the school. Though after everything that we have covered, I'm not really sure what else there is to show. Familiar locations begin to repeat, and I soon realize we've begun to take a circular path around the entire campus. So, Irene, what do we have left to visit before this tour ends? Well, uh, that's it. I've shown you the places I liked, and I even helpfully pointed out the walking trail. Well, you're in luck, Eric. I have just about one more location to show you. In my opinion, it's probably one of the more important ones. What's that? It's the medical facilities where our therapists are staffed. A chill trails down my spine. Ella continues, unaware of my growing dread. Each student has general counseling checkups, though it's pretty relaxed depending on how often sessions need to be scheduled. How often? I feel my throat begin to close up on me. I usually go a few times a month. It's kind of like the principal's office, except only therapists are there. You could take those sessions more seriously. Yeah, yeah, I get that enough from them, thank you. My heartbeat is picking up, and I struggle to focus on my breathing before they get suspicious. Could I pass on that, this part of the tour? I think I've gotten a good understanding of the campus. I'll pick up the rest as I go. I try to cover it with a laugh, but I can tell it sounds off. Ella doesn't seem to notice it, though. I mean, you should be able to locate the diff, uh, facilities in your first week. Are you... I'm fine. I shoot my hands up in defense and flash a smile, but I can feel myself breaking into a cold sweat. I just... can't do this. Sorry, sorry, I, I just need to sit down. I just need to... leave? I want to say it so badly to just spit it out and head back to my sister's apartment so I can sleep away any inclination of what's happening right now. I want to go back to the way things were. I lean up against the wall and try to control my breathing. Eric? Breathe in, breathe out. I finally shake off my mini panic attack after a minute. Eric, are you okay? You need to nah, bah, bah. you need me to fetch someone for you? Both of them instantly react as if they'd seen this before. No, I'm fine, thanks. Just a little nervous about the new school. Even talking about that is a little too much for me. Sorry. Ella nods. I understand. Well, at least you know where this building is and what it does. Do you want to head back now? Yeah, I think I'm done for the day. Mostly recovered, saved from my heart still beating like a drum, we turn a corner and return to the school's entrance. Okay, here we are, all done. You sure you'll be able to find your way to the medical wing? Yeah, orienting, orienteering? Is that even a word? Orienteering is kind of my thing. Alrighty then, I should probably get back to work. Lots to do. It was really nice meeting you, Eric. I'll see you around. And call me if you have any questions, okay? With a brilliant smile, Ella departs, heading into the school through its du heavy double doors. She's clearly dedicated to her role, and the tour was informative. I just wish she hadn't sprung the concept of, concept of a medical wing on me like that. Well, I mean, why not? Or why so? Wait, what? What am I talking about? I don't know. Perhaps I'm being oversensitive. You're looking pensive, Eric. Be in your bonnet. I'd forgotten Irene was still here. Her stature makes her easy to miss. I'm not sure if my face really gives away much, or if it was another lucky guess. Either way, I don't know how I feel about her gleeful expression. It's just a lot, isn't it? All this? I gesture to the expanse of grounds. For us? Don't look at it that way. Just think about how much there is to do here and how much to explore. 
Her grin becomes more sincere. It's just a school, really. Just a school with interesting buildings, I mean. I haven't found any secret passageways yet, but you know, it's still pretty cool. Her absurdity forces a laugh out of my dry mouth, but it doesn't untie the knot in my stomach. Man, you think they'd have to they'd have thought to cater to people who like secret passageways and they weren't designing this place. <laughs> right? But no, just kilometers upon kilometers of boring corridors. What were they thinking? Anyway, I should probably be off. Oh, hello. The doors behind her open again as she spins on the spot to see who it is. Oh, Damon, I thought it was. Uh, hey, Baba. Well, hey, Eric. How was the How was the tour? And who was that girl? What's she just? I turned to my right, but Irene is gone. Okay. Well, she was right there. It was Irene. She joins us halfway through the tour. She's awesome. Ooh, look at you escorted around the school with a girl on each arm. She gives me a little punch on the shoulder. You have to admit, I've got game. <laughs> Hilda steps in his beard, just winds up to give me another whack. Well, Jesus, woman. But it was all okay, though, right? Everything looked good? I mean, as far as a school campus can, I guess. There was... For a moment, I considered confiding my reaction to the medical wing in them. But no, I feel like I shouldn't. After all, the world-leading psychiatric facilities are part of the reason I'm here, as much as I hate to admit it. There's this nice little path that I'll be able to walk around, and Ella was nice. Whoa there, come on, Eric, she's way out of your leap. Hilda elbows Beatrice to the side and butts in. You think you'll be able to find your way around today? The campus looks pretty big. Way bigger than mine. Yeah, I'm sure I'll be fine, they gave me a map anyway. The teachers are nicer here too. There's nothing wrong with your teachers, babe, babe. Bay, <laughs> you just keep fighting with him. Can you blame me with all the work they expect, expect me to do? It's inhuman. You are literally paying them thousands of euros to have the privilege of doing that work. Beatrice freezes, a look of realization crosses her face. Oh shit! I'm going to miss hearing my sister's banter. The door behind them opens again. We're finally done. Finally? Were you getting bored of being told how great this place is? Oh, don't be so cynical, sweetheart. It is a great place. Mr. Bosworth just had a lot to say about it. It may have been a bit... You know what? Can I just say right now, I would have loved it if there was an actual school like this in real life. Like, dude, if I could go there instead of freaking public high school in the US, that would have been amazing. Because, like, I mean, I mean if you... Nah. So... If you have, you know, issues, and you end up in a, a, a mental ward somewhere, um, I don't know how other people perceive it, but me personally, I've never felt a stronger sense of community and camaraderie than when I was in psych wards, even though I barely ever talked to anybody else, because you knew that people were there because of similar issues that you were going through. Maybe not, you know, obviously not the same, but... You know, you can identify with them in a way that you can't identify with, you know, quote unquote, normal people. So this this would be like high school in a psych ward, which is like a dream come true for somebody, you know, struggling with mental illness, at least, you know, from my perspective. Yeah, passionate is the right word to describe him, Mr. Bosforth. He talked a lot about the clubs and other extracurricular things they have going on. Do you think you might get involved in any of that? Mum looks hopeful. Maybe. And now she looks a bit worried. I promise I'm not going to turn into a moping zombie. I'd miss the outdoors too much. Good. I'm sure you must be nervous, but try not to let it get the better of you, okay? <laughs> Making the nervousness work for you. You still d disapproving. What the fuck is wrong with your face? The knot in my stomach tightens almost to the breaking point. It's such an intense physical swoop of emotion that I almost double over. Well, Jesus, dude. I feel my quickening heartbeat and hear it in my ears. My head throbs. Dads, am I right? No, not again. I clench my hands into fists. My nails dig into the palms. Focusing... Focusing. Focusing on that pain, I try to bleed, breathe deeply, breaking through the bonds around my chest. They're all in my head. Nobody's noticed. Mum started speaking. I focus on her words. I'm sure some days you'll feel like not leaving your room at first, but don't. It's working. I can feel myself coming back to reality. 
And if you're really struggling, you can always give me a call, okay? I like that. I think that I think that's they added that. Um, that that was not in the demo, so that was pretty cool. Blah, blah. I will. I swallow and force a smile. This time it looks like Mum might have noticed. Are you okay, sweetheart? Really? I put a bit more effort into my expression. Yeah, for real, I'm fine. This place is great. Well, if you're sure, come here. She pulls me into a tight hug and rubs my back. It's going to be great for you, Eric. Just go into it with an open mind, okay? Yeah, I get it. Everyone's telling me the same thing's going on. She releases me after another extra tight squeeze. Hilda and Beatrice are next, embracing me in unison, though they let me go in a much more sensible amount of time than Mum, who didn't seem to want to let go. We'll miss you, bro. But we're closer to him than we were before. Yeah, but it seems like a time to say goodbye, you know? Okay, Beatrice. I mean, that doesn't ma make any sense, but okay. Come on, girls. Bye, Eric. Love you. Be good, and please keep in touch. Love you, too. Dad stays behind. I don't spend time with him. I don't spend much time with him one-on-one, -on -one, so this is kind of weird. Unexpectedly, he claps a heavy hand on my shoulder and looks me right in the eye. Although firm and unwaving, his expression isn't intimidating. I know how you feel, son. Do you? Yes, really. You probably heard a lot of words today that have been completely meaningless to you and a lot of pla placations that felt totally hollow. I'm not sure what's going on, but Dad's right. It's not going to be like that forever. After a second, he seems to notice his hand is still on my shoulder and, still, and swiftly removes it. He clears his throat, no, no longer looking directly at me. I'm sure you'll make the most out of your time here. And his gaze returns to meet mine, and I'm sure you'll make me proud. He departs. I'm left alone. Just me and the knot in my stomach, tighter than ever. Dad's, am I right? Dad's words echo in my head. I'm sure you'll make the most of your time here. How can I be sure that I'll make any use of my time? The knot in my stomach coils again and again, holding me in place as I watch my family get smaller and smaller. Dude, this is so cool! This was this is way better than the demo. They turn a corner, and then they're gone. Now I'm stranded here. Well, I do know one thing that might be a good use of my time. It might make me feel better, at least. I pick a random direction and begin limping. The tour showed me all the places I'll need to go for classes in daily life, but we only got to see one of the walking paths Mr. Bosworth mentioned. Luckily, it seems as though most of the students that were wandering around before have gone elsewhere, so I don't have to try and hide my limp like I had, like I had to for that whole tour. Before long, I pass the large academic building and continue onwards. It's liberating to be able to walk by myself, even for just a little while. The freshly cut grass gives off that familiar, calming scent. The school is quiet. It feels a little a little strange walking around the school grounds after classes are done. Okay, good. Things are looking okay. I'd usually dart off as soon as the bell rang. I wonder if anybody from back home wonders where I went. I guess I was never really close to anybody there, but I wasn't antisocial. I doubt I'd fit back in anyway. Now I've got to learn to fit in here. Somehow. I mean, Ella seemed normal. Surely there must be more than just her. Then again, there could be more people like Irene instead. Dude, Irene is awesome! What the fuck are you talking about? If I... Dude, if I could, like, hang out with a posse of people that are just like Irene, fucking hell I would do that. Hell yeah! If only things had gone differently. I would be at the school, surrounded by these people. I guess I can't, do, I can't do anything about it now. As Dad said, I've just got to make the most of... Oh, my phone. I pull it from my pocket and look at the screen. It's him. Shock runs through me and my arm goes limp. Why is he... Why? I stare at the screen, seemingly unable to move. Incoming call from Gustav. It doesn't stop. Like it's mocking me. My thumb hovers over the green and red buttons. What would I even say? Hello? Hi? How are you? I get it! Just stop! Please! As if responding to my pleas, the phone goes dark. I'm left standing in the middle of a path with my phone in my hand. Why? Why? <sighs> Damn it. I slide the phone back into my pocket and consult my mental map of the campus. 
I better get back to the dorms before someone sees me like this. I try to take a step in my leg protests. Come on, not now. Deep breaths. Let's just get back to the dorm. With much more effort, I begin limping my way there. A shaft of pale sunlight wakes me up from a shallow, restless sleep before my alarm. Despite the bright morning sun, my room feels chilly and I shiver in my thin pajamas. Pajamas! I wonder if it actually is chilly or if the endless cycle of negative thoughts in my hand is just making me think it is. You'd think the room would retain heat better, what with the window being three times thicker than I'm used to, but it might as well be a hole in the wall. Not even a day here, and that window's thickness is already bothering me. It's such a small detail, I'm not even sure I'd have noticed if it hadn't been pointed out, but now I just can't seem to stop thinking about it. I roll out of bed and try opening it. It's heavy, but it does open. Why wouldn't it? They said my room had been fitted for a low-risk low student. The air streaming in uh, through cr the ah, the air streaming in through the crack smells fatally of freshly cut grass and dew. It's numbing. Does dew have a scent? I don't know. It's numbingly cold, but I let it linger for a moment. Just as much as having that window here in the first place feels stifling, knowing that it can be opened feels relatively comforting. A small measure of control over my life, tiny and inconsequential, maybe, but it's something. I take one final deep breath to clear my head and shut the window. Control's fine and all, but it probably isn't worth coming back up to a freezing room. I should get ready for school. No sense in getting all mopey about nothing before I've even started. I put on my glasses and check my phone for the, for the time. 6.55. Just too late to get a bit more sleep. <laughs> With an involuntary groan, I grab my clothes, my clothes bag to hit the shower. Clothes bag, that's a thing. I need more alcohol. Uh, by the time I've come back clean and dressed, someone sent me a text message. Is it Gustav? Oh, Beatrice. Morning, Eric. Sleep well? Cheer up no matter what, heart. Hope you have a wonderful day. I know you'll make ton of, a ton of friends. The rest is just a bunch of emoji that, if nothing else, represent her, represent her perfectly. I stare at the screen until it turns off by itself, wondering what I should send in return. It did feel good to read. It's nice to know that she cares. It's just no matter how much I try to force on a smile and absorb some of Beatrice's enthusiasm through her text, I just can't bring myself to feel that kind of cheer. It's not even like I'm really sad, more like emotionally neutral, numb. I turn the screen back on and tap out a reply quickly. Slept okay, thanks. Talk to you later. Smiley face. There, I even added a little, a little smiley face at the end so she doesn't worry too much. Now I'm feeling illiterate as well as disingenuous. Good start to the day if there ever was one. <laughs> I'm starting to like this guy. Giving the rest of the room one final look over to make sure I hadn't forgotten anything, I grab my bag and the map from my bedside table and set out to my first class. Despite it already being after 7, the male dorm courtyard is almost as empty right now as it was last night. I thought there would be a crowd of students moving in the general direction of the school, but as far as I can see, the few that are out seem content to just sit on benches and chat. A few are even jogging around in tracksuits. Don't these guys have class in a bit? I, sh I shuffle slowly through the courtyard, throwing the occasional glance this way and that to see if anyone looks like they're in any kind of hurry. More and more students are leaving the dorms and they're all moving about here and there, but there's no prevailing direction to their movement. A few even acknowledge my presence, waving or smiling at me when I pass. I smile back and nod, but nothing much more than that. Either I'm missing something about campus culture, or being late for first period is standard around here. Actually, scratch that, it's probably just first date nerves on my part. The anxiety over getting to my first class on time is overbearing. Either way, I think I'd better get moving. Wouldn't have anything to say to them anyway. After deciding uh, against eating in the crowded cafeteria and taking breakfast in the form of a vending machine cereal bar, I drift back into the lobby to see if I can remember the way to my f uh, to my f what to what to my form room. What's that? I don't know what that is. Form room. As I enter, I feel a surge of relief as I see a familiar face for the first time that morning. A teacher, Miss Kleis. It looks as though she's waiting for someone, standing amidst a gaggle of other students and looking around. 
Apparently, she was waiting for me, as when our eyes make contact, she walks briskly, briskly in my direction, a stern expression on her face. Oh, Jesus. The students instinctively part before her and merge back together in her wake. Surely I'm not already in trouble. Eric, I'm glad you found your way here. I wasn't sure if, you had, if you'd been shown the way, so I thought it best to wait for you here. It seems I'm not in trouble, as I feared, despite her almost frightening expression and short, clipped manner of speech. Oh, thank you, but you didn't have to. Ella showed me uh, where it was yes yesterday. Plus, I have a map. She gives a curt nod and chimes her approval with a small hmm. Good, good. Glad to hear Ella did a good job of introducing you to the building. Shall we be off, then? With only the most cursory pause for me to confirm, she's turned on her heel and w started walking away as briskly as she approached. Apparently, she still wants to walk me to my form room. I hurry along, but her pace is faster than mine, forcing me to half-hop awkwardly to match her. Within a few seconds, she glances around at me and seems to notice my struggling, her expression shifting to become more apologetic. She slows to a much more comfortable pace, and I'm able to catch up and walk next to her instead of trailing behind. As we walk up a set of stairs, I feel my palms start to sweat a little. I hadn't realized that- mm, Camera! No, everything's okay. We're good. I, I hadn't realized how nervous I was, but I honestly have no idea what to expect from this place. I don't know what's going to be expected of me when we reach the form room. Will I have to introduce myself? The sharp clack-clack of Miss Clay's heels echo against the stone walls, for some reason bringing the ticking of a time bomb into my mind. Time bomb, that's a great song by Ogre. As we reach the top of the stairs and enter another corridor, rather more clinical than, that, uh, than the last, she seems to pick up on my nerves, cocking her head as she looks at me. As she looks at me. Her expression softens somewhat. Nervous? Despite her apparent concern, her voice remains quite harsh. Nervous. I suppose I can forgive her. I wouldn't know how to behave in her shoes. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. That's perfectly understandable. It's completely natural to feel nervous in new situations. I can tell Miss Clays is generally trying to reassure me, but she isn't very good at it. It comes off feeling sort of forced and awkward. Especially in circumstances like these. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. But I assure you, you, re you really have nothing to worry about. Our introductions are quite relaxed. Miss Kleis stops in front of a door and turns to me. She glances at the door, then at me. To my surprise, she actually gives me a small smile. I wasn't sure if this would be something she was capable of at all. With nothing but another terse nod as acknowledgement, she opens the door and steps inside. I only notice the noise that had been coming from the classroom in its absence as it dies down almost immediately. Well, shit. I stare at the doorway. Now or never. I take a deep breath in a failed attempt to steady my nerves and follow the teacher inside, where she's already begun to address the class, and I faceplant! That would have been hilarious. Not really. The classroom is just as you expect of a normal classroom. There's desks, a large blackboard, and the students dressed in the same red uniform as... There must be... There must only be 12 students in this class, including me. The few students chatting to each other wrap up their conversations as Miss Kleis takes her place at the front of the... Dude, seriously, like a high school with like, you know, 12 student classes and all of them have some type of mental disorder? Dude, th that would have that would have been freaking paradise for me. Jesus Christ. I would have actually felt welcome instead of, you know, feeling like an outcast. Anyway, fuck it. Fuck it. We're not here. We're not here to be depressed. We're here to have fun and, I don't know, look at anime waifus. I'm left awkwardly standing by the door. Okay, class, today we'll be holding an introduction, so let's all move to the relaxation What? Relaxation room? The fuck is that? Students seem to know what this is, and all stand before, making their way toward a door at the back of the classroom. Miss Kleis turns her attention to me and beckons me to follow her. I follow obediently, walking into the relaxation room behind her. Oh, okay. The room is about half the size of the, of the classroom, painted in neutral, warm colors, and dotted with, a small, with small bookshelves and tables. They changed a lot from the demo. This is actually pretty cool. I, I, I like this. A circle of chairs have been, uh, has been formed in the center of the classroom. Some of the students have already taken seats, while a few are more content to choose seats outside the circle. 
There's a girl over there listening to music. Is that allowed? I'd, I'd much rather take a seat on at the edge and listen to music, but I guess it's not really an introduction as if I'm as far away from anyone's attention as I can be. I take a seat between two classmates and wait until the rest of the class has found somewhere to sit. Ellipses. This process takes a lot longer than expected. A few students seem unsure as to whether as to where they want to sit, but Miss Clays seems fine waiting for them. Once everyone is seated, Miss Clays begins speaking. Okay, everyone, as I said, we'll be holding an introduction for a new student today, so I'll explain the rules. Rules? Miss Clays reaches for a shelf behind her and retrieves a small pillow. What? This is the what? This is the talking pillow. We'll be passing this around the circle. If you're holding the pillow, you can introduce yourself if you like, and if not, you can pass it along. Oh, okay. It's got to be the strangest introduction I've ever found myself in. Yeah, you haven't been in a, a psych ward, have you? Is this, is this a norm here? I'll begin. I'm Miss Clays, and I'll be your homeroom teacher. I've been teaching for many years, and my hobbies include reading and puzzles. The class is quiet for a moment before Miss Clays passes the pillow to her right. That student immediately passes it on again, apparently unwilling to introduce themselves. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Amalia. I'm in the Literature Club. Oh God! Dude, every time I see Literature Club, I get PTSD flashback. Holy fuck! God damn! That's such a good fucking game. <laughs> anyway, what? No, we're good, we're good, we're good. Is Night Button chat? I don't know. Probably not. Uh, Amalia considers, considers adding more before passing the pillow on further. Donkey, donkey. We spend the next 20 minutes passing the pillow around the circle and in introducing ourselves. Some simply state, say their name, while some uh, take the time to explain why their favorite food is their favorite. It seems so childish. Before long, the pillow is my, in my hands and all eyes are on me. Time to step up, motherfucker! They're not judging. Not mean or expectant. Some are even bored. I'm Eric. I used to like hiking. Uh, geography too, I guess. And just like that, my, introdu my introduction is over. Jesus Christ, I need to work on my diction. I keep on biting my tongue while I'm talking. That's very uncomfortable. Maybe I was hyping this up too much. I pass the pillow to Fran. He, ooh, he likes... Hey, Fran! Hey! <laughs> Oh, okay, so it's a, he's a he. I thought there was some uh, ambiguity to him. I don't know, whatever. Whatever. He's like second or third best girl. <laughs> Even if he's a he. <laughs> After, I didn't mean that to be sexist or homophobic or anything. I was, I was just making a joke. Fucking forgive me. Anyway. After a few more introductions, few of which I will remember, the pill is handed back to Miss Clays. Okay, class, that was very good. Split into some smaller groups now. More introductions? Miss Clay sp splits us into groups of four and encourages us to ask each other icebreaker questions, whatever those are. I don't really get the point of all this, but I guess I've got to play along. Socialization, dude. That's actually really, really important for, you know, some... I mean, you know, not everybody who has a mental illness is, you know, unsociable, but, you know... You know, if your brain's being fucked with, you know, sometimes... Dealing with other people is, is a bit tougher than others, you know? So this is actually really cool. This is really cool. Luckily, one of the people in my group seems happy to talk about herself at length. What about you, Eric? Falk? Huh? What, what, what was that? Sorry. What's your ideal job? Oh, uh, I'm not sure, really. I never really think about that. Same here, to be honest. I think I'd be an investment banker. An investment banker? Ah, that's... Interesting. Interesting, how? I don't fucking know. I'd have guessed that most people would have chosen something exotic is all. Why is that? Her tone is getting sharper with each response. Did I mess up? I, uh, I'm not sure, really. Just because we're here doesn't mean we can't do normal stuff, you know, Eric. Oh, no, that's not what I meant. I, what's wrong with wanting to do investments anyway? Crap. I'm sorry, Miss Poke. I, oh, man. What should I do? Eric, Amalia... Now I'm in trouble. Great. Amalia, I'm sure Eric misspoke. He didn't mean to imply that. Right, Eric? Right, I'm sorry. Amalia opens her mouth to respond, but reconsiders for a second. You're right, I'm sorry. That's fine, Amalia. Introductions can be stressful for everyone. Are you two okay now? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, again, sorry. It's fine, man. Let's just get on with the introduction stuff. 
Right. The introductions continue. Frauk likes ham sandwiches. Niklaus wants to be a lawyer, and Amalia likes swimming in lakes. After a tedious hour of carefully choosing my words, my first period at St. Dilfnaz is over. Thank freaking Christ. I follow everyone back into the, into the classroom as Miss Kleis had, had instructed and attempt to find myself a seat. Most of the students around me and all those directly adjacent to my desk get up to move off to their next lesson. I remain where I am, though. I have maths with Miss Kleis. 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 The block. The classroom quickly fills up with other students again. This time, it looks like the desk next to mine by the window might be occupied. A girl enters the classroom and makes a beeline right for it. Wham! Oh, she's cool too. I remember. I remember her. As she notices me, she falters, visibly shocked. It seems my new and unexpected presence might not be entirely welcome. She regains her composure quickly, though fixing her. her fixing back her resolutely resolutely neutral expression and taking her seat by the window without saying a word to me or, aside from the slight hesitation, acknowledging my existence at all. Nice girl. The first thing that catches my eye about her is how little she catches my eye. Sitting still and staring out the window, oblivious to the rest of the class, wearing a hoodie rather than the standard blazer everyone else seems to wear, I wonder how she gets away with that. Despite being out of uniform, she almost blends into the wall. If she hadn't sat next to me, I doubt I would have noticed her at all. She hasn't looked my way at all, and the fancy look of metallic earbuds in her ears make trying, to, uh, uh, make trying a verbal introduction seem foolish. I'm not sure why I'm focusing on this girl over any of the other students in the class. Because she has protagonist powers! Maybe her inconspicuousness makes her somewhat more conspicuous? Miss Clay taps the whiteboard and clears her throat for the class's attention. Okay, so today we'll be reviewing the material we covered in the previous lesson. These worksheets, blah, 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 blah. she brandishes a sheaf of papers. Comprise a thorough test of it all. To be finished by the end of the lesson, please. As she starts handing them down the class, she looks at me, an expression of realization on her face. Ah, Eric, of course, you would know what we covered last time. Would you like to partner up with someone? Take your pick. I imagine it would be good to get to know some of your fellows. I'm not sure what to say, except sure, which I do, sheepishly. Scanning the material on the sheet Miss Clayce has placed in front of me, it doesn't seem to be too challenging. Maths isn't exactly my forte, but this is relatively simple stuff. I might have missed the previous lesson, but it's nothing I couldn't handle on my own. Still, it wouldn't hurt to partner up, introduce myself, socialize a bit. That would be the normal thing to do. Well, who knows what's normal here? Might as well try, at least. The girl next to me is still staring out the window. The muffled and t tinny beat from her headphones bleeding into the room around her, barely audible to me over the noise of the class. Presumably in time with the music she's listening to, her fingers are drumming out a beat on the des desk in front of her. I do like this mu this music though. It's very, you know, I need to play Katoa Shoujo again. I remember, I remember that had really good music, too. Rin's theme was amazing. Anyway, actually, it looks more like someone playing an imaginary piano than imaginary drums. Her fingers appear spider-like, splayed across the desk. I wonder if she's aware that she's doing that. She must be really into whatever she's listening to. In my distraction, it seems like everyone else in the class has already partnered up or started the work themselves, leaving this girl as my only choice. Oh, shucks! Who would have thought? Working with someone who seems so strongly not to want to be noticed probably isn't a good idea, and I'm sure I could take care of the relatively simple-looking worksheet by myself, but Miss Clays did seem very keen for me to work with a partner. I wonder if she'll even hear me if I talk to her. Hello. You have to start with hello. She turns her head in my direction, though still doesn't face me properly. Instead, she focuses on some spot on the wall behind me. It's not much, but at least she's noticed my presence and is no longer gazing absent-mindedly out the window. I can already feel that this is going to be difficult. I'm Eric. In a daring move, I stretch out a hand in introduction. The look of confusion and surprise on her face is almost pitiful. The girl looks worried and shocked beyond all belief, turning away from me again. Is this some great unforgivable faux pas I was unaware of? I'm about to withdraw my hand and apologize when she gingerly grasps it through her sleeve. She shakes my hand with just her thumb and her index finger so delicately that if I hadn't watched it happen, I might not have noticed before abruptly dropping it and withdrawing. Somehow she looks more surprised than before. 
Her eyebrows look like they're just about ready to fly off her face, and she stares at her own hand as if it committed some foul act of betrayal. Aside from in that one brief moment of shock, she still hasn't looked me in the eye. I feel pretty bad for worrying her, and try to think of a way to move the conversation past this. Don't say anything stupid. Hey, nice headphones. Uh, partly stupid. Clearly noticing my attempt to move past my initial horrific mistake, she turns in my direction again and smiles slightly haltingly, looking only a little less hesitant than before, but this time definitely and deliberately looking me in the eye. Oh, how sweet! It was so cute! Yeah, she's adorable! Um, once again, I notice the music faintly leaking out. It may just be that it's very faint, but I don't recognize it at all. This is the Hanako of this game, isn't it? I'm sure she's her crone character, whatever. Uh, what are you listening to? She shrugs and looks thoughtful for a moment. Doesn't he say something stupid about sandwiches or something? Sliding her headphones out of her ears, she moves to get something out of her bag. Maybe it's time to give up. If she really isn't going to communicate with me... But then from her bag, she pulls out the smartphone uh, her headphones are connected to and shows me the screen. A music player open. I catch a glimpse of what she's listening to. I've never heard of the artist and the album art. A photo of a couple of people sitting on a cliff by the sea doesn't give away anything about the type of music. Oh, cool. Uh, what do you say in this situation? It's not like I'm going to get a response if I ask what kind of music it is. Do you like it? Motherfucker! In all honesty, I probably would have said the exact same thing. But still, motherfucker, that's... Mm. Clearly, judging from her expression, she understands the problem in communication as well. Nonetheless, her only response is to nod once and smile almost imperceptibly. Being unable to think of anywhere else to take the conversation, I change tack and tap the worksheet on my desk with a pencil. You want to work on these together? She nods again. Oh, awesome! She's adorable! Uh, she seems to be getting over the initial shock of me talking to her, but anything else about her is difficult to gauge. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to work on these together, seeing as she's apparently incapable of speech. Alright, let's divide up the work, I suppose. I do odd-numbered questions, you do evens. Without a word, she nods one final time, takes a copy of the sheet from me, scans the que second question for only a few seconds, and starts scribbling nonchalantly on a page from her workbook. Doesn't exactly look like she's writing, her hand movements are weirdly erratic, but who am I to say? Seems like she's glad to have an excuse not to interact anymore. Okay then. I sigh and settle down to my work with only the occasional glance at the strange girl sitting next to me. Hey, I got one view in the entire time I've been streaming. A quarter of an hour later, as I'm in the middle of my work, a sheet of paper falls unceremonious, unceremoniously onto my desk. I look at my mysterious neighbor, who is already staring out the window once more, headphones back in her ears. I take a look at her worksheet. The edges of the paper are covered in small doodles and scribblings. Apparently that's how this girl works. Nevertheless, she has managed to finish all of the even-numbered questions. And here I thought she wasn't doing any work. I finish off quickly and pass my answers to her. Sorry, I don't know if it's alright. Seemed simple enough, though. Without even acknowledging me, she turns to her desk and starts writing again. After a minute of copying down my answer, she stands up, walks to the front of the class, and hands Miss Clays her work. Once Miss Clays has thanked her, she seems to hesitate, glancing furtively in the direction of my desk. I feel like I shouldn't be watching her, so I look out the window instead, but keep her in my peripheral vision. After a few seconds of consideration, she seems to come to a decision. She heads back over to her desk and sits down again. She takes a deep breath and glances at me once again, although I don't think she knows I can see her as I'm doing a good job of keeping her exclusively out of my direct line of sight. I think she has social anxiety, possibly, I don't know. Socially awkward in some, in some respect. After another few seconds that feel strangely tense, she exhales, shakes her head, grabs her bag, and exits swiftly. I look at the clock. There's still ten minutes of the lesson to go, but Miss Clay said nothing about the girl leaving early. The girl, huh? Didn't even learn her name. Smooth, buddy! I don't know how to feel about what just happened. Somehow, despite having done very little, I feel exhausted. First period isn't even over yet. I sink into my chair, ready to admit defeat. Is every day going to be as awkward as this? I could have sworn you said something way stupider in the demo. But they changed a lot of stuff since then, so, you know, whatever. The cafeteria is already half full by the time I make it. I don't even need to limp all the way to inside to tell. You can hear the students inside talking right from the hallway. 
I'd hope for some half-empty table, but wherever I look, it's just people sitting and talking. Some converse over their food, others are shouting jokes and insults to their friends on the other side of the room. A few actually look like they've finished and just don't feel like getting up. A line of students holding out trays and clutching handfuls of plastic utensils stretches out through the hall, all chattering excitedly at each other. Yeah, it's normal school, dude. Come to grips with it. Before coming here, I had this mental image of patients queuing up at an institution, lining their sterile gowns for the nurse to fill out the little polyester into the other. It's not a psych ward, dude. Although, you know, again, in a psych ward, that's where I felt the most amount of uh, freaking camaraderie than I did anywhere else, which is weird because I didn't even talk to anybody there. But, you know, whatever. Continuing on, I knew that it couldn't be that bad, but a part of me wouldn't believe that. I was afraid that coming here would bring it back up, but the reality doesn't sustain it. That bleak fantasy demands an air of oppressive silence, but everyone here is so lively and active. It demands that it smell of antiseptic and bleach, but all I can make out is meat and pastries and sliced fruits. And that's just great. That's better than great. It's reassuring. It's normal. So why do I feel like I just can't blend in? Everyone's just so busy doing things that they know how to do, talking to people they're already friends with. Everyone looks like they have such a clear direction. I don't even know where to start. I'm not really with these people. What if we talk and they don't like me? What if they make fun of my lip? It's literally like any other school, dude. Just because they're childish, uh, just because they are childish fears, don't mean they doesn't mean they don't matter. I'm with you on that. And it's not just that too. They all look fine right now, but I just can't forget where I am. This place can't, this place can't be just like any other school by definition. The rules for fitting in here can't possibly be the same. What if I make some terrible faux pas because I don't know how things work here and they take offense? Well, I mean, you've already been down that road, dude. I stop a few paces past the door before even taking my own tray. I don't need this headache right now. It's a little defeatist, but I genuinely think that at this point just getting some fresh air would be better. Vending machine food was good enough for me this morning. If it means not having to sit down in here, it's going to do just fine now. Oh, one of my favorite characters is coming up. I didn't have much of an appetite anyway, and I can always come, down, uh, come back here once I've made myself a little more comfortable. I've got almost the entire year ahead of me. There'd be nothing to gain from forcing myself over ten more minutes. Hello. There is a sitting area next to the cafeteria, complete with benches and a vending machine. A few students are gathered around it, but they seem to be going through pretty quickly. I pull out my wallet and get in line, hoping no one will try to talk to me. Come on, dude. Thankfully, most just take their sandwiches and leave rather than lingering around. Soon, the corridor is left blissfully silent, and the only person besides me is the tall, blonde girl in front of me. Hey. She hums softly to herself as she approaches the machine. Thinking about it now, maybe she has been, uh, maybe she has been for a while, and it was just hard to hear because of everyone else. It's not something you normally notice, but she hums really well. I've heard people singing on purpose and not sounding so good. I lift my eyes to her in time to see her reaching down for her purse, but before she can pull out any chain, she instead stops humming and turns around to face me. Caught in the act, motherfucker! Hey, there she is. What draws my attention, though, is her eyes. Or rather, eye. I can see she has one, the left. Piercing, golden brown, expertly made up, long, mascara lashes. By contrast, if she even still has it, the her right one is covered up with a large, sterile medical bandage. Call it stupid, but my first instinct is to point it out somewhere. Maybe ask her if she's okay. Your eye's missing. That's not going to be awkward at all. Because, you know, she's got a bandage over her right eye. What if she hadn't noticed? I love how self-aware he is. Luckily, I think better of it before I can open my mouth. Would you like to go before me? Wait. Is she talking to me? She's looking right at me. All signs do seem to be pointing towards that being the case. No, no, it's all right. You go ahead. Please, I insist. It is no trouble. She steps aside and... Uh, and keeps quietly looking at me, motioning with a hand toward her place. Even when not humming, her voice has a clear musical quality. I'm not sure if she's making fun of me or if she's just being polite, but I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. Moving forward, I pick a different kind of sandwich from yesterday and a bottle of lemonade to wash it down with before sitting down on a nearby bench. I set aside the bottle and bite into my sandwich, but as soon as I've started to enjoy it, I'm interrupted by the girl. Excuse me, would you mind if I sat here with you? Nope! 
Looking up, I see her standing right near the bench in front of me, daintily gesturing toward it as if intending to illustrate the concept of sitting. Mouth too full to do much but mumble, I make with an indifferent shrug. Dude. Dude! She nods, then sets her purse slowly on the bench and sits down. After today's class, her st smile is warm and refreshingly friendly. She's examining me inscrutably with her unbandaged eye. I get so absorbed in following her brown iris spinning about by the time I've noticed her talking to me, she's already had to repeat herself once. Okay, well that's not awkward. Uh, what? That sandwich. She speaks in a patient tone. Why did you choose it? That machine offers several kinds of sandwiches. Why did you pick this one? What an odd question. I guess I could just not answer, but she looks perfectly serious. Besides, she did move aside from me in line. It'd be rude to stay silent now that I've made it clear that I did hear her. Hey, the one viewer that I had just left. Awesome. Let's see. I didn't have anything last night, and all I had for breakfast was a cereal bar. I don't know, I was hungry. Felt like a good choice. I mean, it's a sandwich, right? How bad could it be? Hard to screw up something... Hard to screw something like that up. I see. Do you like it, then? Eh, sure, it's egg or something, I think. Got some vegetables in it. Definitely beats having nothing. Hunger's the best sauce in the world, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, didn't even realize how hungry I was until now. Saving game! Did I even have any choices up until now? Don't you wish you had a scent for every time that happened? One moment you're having an interesting thought, and the next time you look at the clock, you've already missed dinner. Sort of. I just wish it'd been an interesting thought rather than just, I don't know, not feeling like it or whatever. I take another experimental bite to see if she'd object and she doesn't. Her eye keeps following me though, turning silently under the lid while the girl sits in silence. Did I do something wrong? Did I give a wrong answer? Not to sound rude or anything, but why exactly did you ask me that? Her lips stretch into a coy smile. Protocol. I put down my sandwich and swallow, waiting for her to elaborate, but she doesn't say anything more. I I'm not sure I understand. You'll you'd have to forgive me, I... The truth is, I'm really new here, like I only arrived last night. Uh, this is my first day around, I don't really know how this works. She puts the back of her hand to her mouth to stifle a giggle. I think I can make out a flash of gauze on her wrist when she her... Oh god, is she a self-harmer? Oh, please don't tell me she's a self-harmer. I think I, I had the exact same reaction before. I can't remember. I've only played this game like once or twice. Whereas Katawa Shoujo I played like six times, so. Anyway. Uh, I hope it was just my imagination. No, no, it's definitely there. It's definitely there. You can see it. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that I have to forgive you, but given your circumstances and seeing as you haven't done anything wrong that I know, fine. I forgive you. Gee, thanks. From her smile, you'd almost think she was going to answer your welcome. Instead, her expression softens. Softens? Softens. I really pronounced the T on that one. When she, sp when she next speaks, so does her tone. I know I might not feel that way right now, but all of us have been in your place at one time or another. Or I know that I have. I've been, at least. She turns her head to glance toward both sides of the empty hallway. So all of us. So all of us as far as I'm aware. I hope you realize that. I do, I thanks, but it doesn't it doesn't really make it feel any better. It didn't the last time I was told that either. The girl nods matter of factly. It almost never does. Still there's a reason they keep drumming it into you, even if it if it's obnoxious or if it sometimes feels like a slogan. It is simply a true statement. I think there is a value in that, whether or not it makes you feel better. I don't know if I'm meant to respond. I'm not sure what I would say. Are you not comfortable eating with all the others? It sounds stupid when you say it like that. Does it? I apologize then. That wasn't my intention. I think it's an understandable sentiment. Take that for what it's worth. Uh, maybe it is. I don't know. I know it's just a matter of time or whatever. It's just... Look, I'm just kind of tired today. Woke up a bit earlier than I'm used to, and now it's like that morning days just won't pass. The next time that happens, try going for a walk. It might help you to get your blood pumping. That's what I do when I wake up too early. I'm okay. 
thanks, I guess? I'm torn between looking back at her and looking away. Just as, just as I make up my mind to pathetically gaze at my sandwich, she talks. Ah, oh, but what, I, what am I doing? It's not every day that you meet a new student. Hello. How you doing? How you doing? Jesus. Anyway, um, with a long, graceful step, she stands in front of me. My name is Katja Baum. Boom. Boom. From Mr. Rosenstein's. Rosenstein's class. Yes. Jesus, those things. Anyway, um, you may call me Katja if you wish. I'm originally from Linz, Austria, though I've been living in Vienna for the past few years now. Don't fucking get mad at me. I mean, just... <laughs> They're there, okay? Just fucking fuck off. I'm sure that you've already been given the customary tour, but nevertheless, allow me the honor of welcoming you to our school. I, yeah, I can't tell if those are collars on her... What, what, what? Cuffs? Cuffs on her dress shirt? Or if those are actual bandages? I hope your stay will be pleasant and beneficial. She adds a little, a little flourish of her hand and a bow, and by now I honestly can't tell if she's serious. Her smile looks like something from a poster, even an inscrutable, teasing, humorous. I don't know what to make of it, but maybe I'm not meant to make anything of it at all. This is just Katja's thing, her particular way of being polite. She sits back down like nothing's happened. Oh, wow. Uh, thanks. Hmm. My name's Eric Wilhelm. Wilhelm, whatever. And I guess you can call me Eric? I'm not sure why she added that part, but whether that's just standard protocol or Katja's own idea of manners, I don't see a reason not to follow. I'm from Miss Clayus's class, and I'm originally from Basel. Basel? 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 Sw uh, Switzerland. The city, not the canton. She nods carefully, looking far more interested than I'd have thought anyone should be. I thought one was inside the other. Well, yes, but not everyone knows that, and it can be confusing. Also, the second is technically called Baselstadt. Baselstadt, Baselstadt, Basel, ba Baselstadt, if you care about it. So much as you do, I do admire specificity. When I don't respond, she straightens up in her chair and gives another short, dignified bow. It's a pleasure to meet you, Eric. I thank her, and then the air grows silent. Neither of us says a word. Fantastic moves. You got game. Just for the record, you know, I don't normally eat vending machine sandwiches either. I'd never have thought to imply that. But yeah, I mean, it's not like it's disgusting or anything, but it's sort of bland, right? That is true. As you said yourself, though, there's a reason you've chosen to. Because it's lunchtime and that's just what was here? Cut your snickers. Precisely. I can empathize with that choice. Glad it's not just me. By the way, can I ask some something? Certainly. Why that last part of the introduction, with the cities and county countries and all that? Sounds like it's something formal. Do they do just do that here in Austria in general, or well, do they just do that in Austria in general, or just here? There we go. Once again, protocol. This is, as you may have already noticed, a rather multinational institution. There are students from all over Europe, and even a few from outside it. Knowing where someone came from can be helpful in gauging how to approach them. Specifically, it often means knowing what languages they might speak. English is the most common teaching language, so it tends to be defaulted to unless there's a shared one. But since so few students come from the Anglosphere, this means that more often than not, both sides are made equally uncomfortable. I'd like to believe neither wants that. I'm assuming you speak native German? I know I'd be more comfortable if I were speaking my native language. I nod, vaguely aware that the sandwich in my hand is still not even half eaten. Shove it in your face! Yeah, Basel, 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 Baselstadt, uh, right next, right across the Rhine from Germany, so that's what we speak. Is it unusual? Guns und Garnicht. Guns, Guns und Garnicht. It's been so long since I've tried to speak German. I sit dumbfounded for what feels like far too long while my brain switches gears back to German. Either Katja hasn't noticed, or she doesn't mind, her German is as rapid and precise as her English. Hell yeah. Most students are still around from around Austria, and those that aren't uh, do tend to speak German, with the exception of a significant French minority. As I said, though, it can lead to trouble on those cases where uh, they're not. 
Sounds simple enough. I sh should probably remember that for the next time I run into someone. Hey, it's not all bad, right? Encouraging a little multilingualism, multilingualism and all that. That does make you sound very Swiss. No, I'm serious. They say that there are proven benefits in child de development. I think. She rests back in her seat with an intrigued expression. You know, I think I've heard that before. It's a pretty popular parenting advice. So I've seen it a lot. She doesn't respond, and I'm left to finish my sandwich. You still haven't explained that part of the protocol where you ask me about the sandwich. Well, you could... Oh, okay, I thought, I thought the music changed for a second. Well, you could call it a precaution for when confronting n newly met students. Precaution? Against what? Offering them the wrong sort of appetizer? She smirks, but doesn't laugh. Oh, damn. To be honest, the question itself doesn't matter much. It's the way it is answered that does. I like her. I like her a lot. Meaning... Whether there is a reply and how clear it is, whether it makes sense, whether it's stammered or mumbled or implies offense. It's a crude instrument, but it can be invaluable in gauging if and how to proceed when talking to someone new. Wait, so if I'd answer more slowly, or not to the point, or if I didn't, you'd have known to keep talking to me in little words? No, that would have been reckless of me. However, given my personal experience, I would have been able to make a better informed guess. If I'd guessed wrong, I could have apologized. Sounds like a small comfort if you've made that kind of wrong assumption about someone. But worse than assuming that they think and talk just like yourself, and behaving on that, potentially saying something that hurts them, using figures of speech that they won't understand, pushing them to talk when they don't even want to, not everyone can be approached the same way. Hey! Check from before. Some students don't get metaphors. Others are not always in the mood to talk, or never want to talk about something that seems natural to you. Some don't want to be talked to at all. I nod, thoughtfully. Why the sandwich thing, then? If the question itself doesn't matter, why not just ask how I'm doing, or something about the weather? It was the first one that came to mind. Optimally, the question needs to be unexpected and not have an objective answer, since those are far easier to answer even if the student is otherwise not receptive to conversation. I like her a lot. <laughs> From there, it is simply a matter of prodding and probing and co coming to the conclusions as you go. You'll probably get used to it after a while. She studies me carefully while I ponder her words. I can get what she's saying from a, well, clinical viewpoint. Assuming she does have enough, uh, enough experience to tell, it can certainly be useful if she wants to avoid making social blunders. In a school like Sing Divnaz, it's probably a crucial skill to learn. I make a note to myself to give it a try. Uh, I, ah, I make a note to maybe give it a try myself. First warning bill pulls me back to reality. From the way it makes Katja get up and turn to look at her watch, I'm assuming it's the same for her. Don't you have classes to attend? Yeah, don't you? She nods, getting up while I push myself off the bench, trying to keep the weight off, off of my bad leg. This would be a terrible time to trip like an idiot. God damn it! Self-voicing, fuck off! See you around, or something. Likewise, I enjoyed our conversation. Fuck off! Uh, anyway, I turn away and, uh, toward what I hope are the classes, leaving Katja behind with a vending machine. Okay, and I think I'm gonna call it there. We've been on for almost two hours. And, uh... Yeah. Got introduced to one of my favorite characters. We had one viewer this entire freaking time, which, yeah, I mean, you know, is better than normal. So, I think, yeah, this was a su success, I suppose. Um, uh, yeah. Fuck it!